Jamie Harrison. Hello, Georgia! Let me say that again. Hello, Georgia! Folks, it is so, so good to be here with you. Now, y'all know I'm from South Carolina, but let me tell you, when I heard that in Georgia we were going to have a party to celebrate 100 days of this administration, I knew I had to get on the road to be here in Georgia with each and every one of you. <laughs> Folks, we have the President and Dr. Biden joining us this evening. And in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to the Democratic Party of Georgia led by my friend, Representative Nakima Williams. And I have a lot of folks I need to recognize today. We have my partner at the DNC, Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms, the mayor of Hotlanta. We have representatives, Sanford Bishop. We have representatives Hank Johnson, Lucy McBath, and Carolyn Bardot. State Senator D Dr. Michelle Owl. And of course, we have Georgia's fair fighter, Stacey Abrams. I want to thank all of you for joining us today to celebrate an amazing first 100 days in a safe and healthy manner. I also want to thank you for the strength that you have shown over the past year. Over the past four years, really, you stared down adversity and you did not sit back down. Folks, we need you to stay strong, stay strong for a little bit longer because, folks, we are going to make it. We're going to make it because of the work that President Biden and Vice President Harris have done to get us here and because of the work that they're going to do over the next four years. My friends, we've come a long way in the last four years. The White House and the Senate were controlled by people who did not care about your interests. Their policies ignored working people. Instead of serving the public, they took every opportunity to serve themselves and their friends. When the pandemic brought this country to its knees, we needed leaders. The Republicans in power did the bare minimum, and we had to force them to do that. They turned COVID relief efforts into a partisan issue. Now, I don't know about you, but where I come from, life and death doesn't mean left versus right. It means right versus wrong. But my friends, what I love about this country is that we fix our mistakes, and the American people turned out in November to fix some very big mistakes. With Georgia leading the pack, you showed patience and you continued to put in the work. And you did not back down even when the eyes of the country were all on you. And the other side did all and everything they could to keep you down. Twice, two times, you stood up, you spoke out, and most importantly, Georgia, you voted. You voted for Democrats. You helped us get Joe Biden in the White House, and because of you, you sent Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff to the U.S. Senate. So Georgia, on behalf of the country, on behalf of the country, I want to say thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of the Democratic Party, I promise you this, we will not let you down. And in just 100 days, President Biden has proven what happens when you elect actual leaders. 
He got to work on getting the American Rescue Plan passed, and he fixed the mistakes of the past four years. Folks, we are tackling the pandemic head on. No president in modern history has taken office during a global health crisis of this level. But in 100 days, we administered more than 200 million vaccines. We are delivering much needed help to the American families. In the face of a crashing economy, we cut taxes for families with children. We also delivered 160 million relief checks. And we strengthened the Affordable Care Act by slashing premiums. And folks, we sent almost $1.9 billion here to Georgia to expand Medicaid. So Governor, it's time for you to do some work and expand Medicaid in here for Georgia. We are making investments to rescue and build our economy, folks. The Biden-Harris administration has created more new jobs in the first 100 days than any administration in history. One million new jobs. We also extended, we also extended the small business loan program and we provided relief to four million small businesses struggling during the pandemic. Folks, this is a government that delivers for the people it represents. But don't forget, President Biden didn't just promise to get us back on track, he promised to build back better. The American Jobs Plan will not only help us rebuild our crumbling infrastructure, because y'all, I know in South Carolina we got potholes as big as I am, and I'm sure y'all got some here in Georgia too. Let's fill those potholes, and Joe Biden's going to send the money to do just that. But this plan will reimagine the American economy. The United States will be more competitive on the world stage, and we will continue to set the standard for global innovation. And we're not going to leave anyone behind, y'all. We will not leave anyone behind. Communities of color and rural communities will gain access to broadband and clean water. Because we can't claim to lead the world if we don't lead and help our own people. Our investments will allow us to take on the climate crisis and move to a clean energy economy. We're going to continue to help families address the cost of health care and child care. We're also going to help families address challenges like paid leave and education. This all happened not because of the people who stand on the stage or who will stand on the stage. This all happened because of each and every one of you. It happened because you were tired of the talk and you demanded action. It happened because you were tired of the games and you demanded leadership. It happened because you were tired of elected officials working against you and you demanded that public servants work and do their jobs. And because of you, Georgia, people around the country finally have hope again. They see that the light is at the end of the tunnel and it's filled with opportunity. It's filled with a nation that is healthier, a nation that is safer, a nation that is more prosperous, a nation that is more fair, a nation that is more competitive. My friends, the president summed, summed it up with three words. America is back. America is back. America is back because of the past 100 days of rescue, repair, and renewal. It's back because of you, and together we're working to make it better than ever. So now I need y'all to do me a favor. We need you in this fight. If you are ready to join us in this work, to continue to build on the things that you all started last November and again in January, if you are ready, I need you to pull out your phones. Pull out your phones, y'all. And what I need you to do is to get ready to send a text. Text WIN, W-I-N, to 43367. Again, that's WIN, W-I-N, to 43367. Folks, I am counting on you. 
I need you to tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers. I need you to tell everyone who will listen about everything you heard here today. Tell every person you see on screen or in person that President Biden delivered. Tell them that Raphael Warnock, John Ossoff, and Democrats in Congress delivered. Tell them that President Biden delivered COVID relief and set a proper plan for vaccinating everybody. Tell them that he is actively working to make our schools safe. Tell them that he is doing his job as a leader. Folks, our job is to make sure everybody knows about this. And you have to help me tell the story. And we have to tell the story in our greatest time of need. It was this president, it was this president and Democrats in Congress that stood up and delivered for all of you. Folks, I can't say thank you enough, but I want to say it one more time. Thank you, Georgia. Thank you, Georgia. And folks, I am happy to welcome to the stage one of the architects to make sure that you know we are building back better but she helped to make sure that the Georgia Democratic Party was doing what it needed to do in order to deliver for the nation. Folks, do me a favor and give a great welcome to the Congresswoman and the chair of the Georgia Democratic Party, Nakima Williams. Hello, Georgia. Y'all, I'm Nakima Williams, the chairwoman of the Democratic Party and your congresswoman down in Georgia's 5th Congressional District. Welcome back to Georgia, President Biden and First Lady Dr. Jill Biden. President Biden, I am so thrilled that you chose Georgia to celebrate your 100th day in office. And I don't know about y'all, but I watched last night's joint address with so much pride because it is assuring to know that we have a leader in the White House whose main concern is working for the people. He is truly an example of servant leadership, something that we've been missing for way too long. Y'all, in Georgia, it's a new day. And in our country, we have a new administration that has already shown their intention to work for the people, and that includes all the people. The last 100 days have been spent putting America back on track by getting vaccines in arms, money in pockets, and putting people back to work, and something that's way important to me, our children back to school safely. Thanks to President Biden's leadership, we have over 200 million shots in arms and are finally turning the corner on this pandemic. And I was so proud to join my colleagues in Congress to pass President Biden's American Rescue Plan, which is now signed into law. Along with getting our students back to school safely and putting money back in the pockets of struggling families, individuals, and small businesses, President Biden's plan has mounted a national vaccination program that sets up community vaccination sites and addresses disparities that we know we're facing in our communities of color. Thanks to his leadership, we finally turned the corner on this pandemic. We've scaled up testing and tracing, addressed shortages of PPE, and invested in high quality treatments. We've increased access to more affordable health care, including incentives like states in Georgia who unfortunately still haven't found the political courage to expand Medicaid. These new incentives would extend coverage to more than 500,000 people in the state of Georgia alone. Y'all, that's a big deal. I won't say what our president might say. The American Rescue Plan sends more than $4 billion in relief to K-12 schools, allowing school districts 
to not only address safely reopening, but to address the learning loss that happened over the past year during the pandemic. And I can tell you that as the mom of an Atlanta Public Schools kindergartner, my Carter Cakes, I know that I speak for so many parents when I say thank you. Because y'all virtual kindergarten was hard. I know it was hard on kindergartners, but it was hard on the adults too. Now, if you haven't received your STEMI yet, it's on the way. More than six million adults in Georgia will receive checks of up to $1,400 per person directly in your bank accounts. That's 88% of all Georgians, 88%. Y'all, the American Rescue Plan will cut child poverty in half with the child tax credit. Families will start receiving monthly checks as early as this summer, and we're just getting started. We're gonna be bold and visionary, rethinking America's infrastructure and creating millions of jobs in the process with the American Jobs Plans. And y'all, these are gonna be good union jobs. We're investing in families by expanding access to education, extending the child tax credit, and making sure that every child's future is bright. And last night's announcement of the American Families Plan is the hope that our families and communities need in this time of uncertainty. The American Families Plan will provide economic security and justice to families, ensuring that everyone has the opportunity to contribute to our economy and care for themselves and their loved ones. Y'all, it goes beyond helping American families meet the needs of today. This plan powers the innovation and growth of tomorrow through historic expansions and access to quality education and childcare. Every three and four-year-old will be guaranteed access to preschool every child. Childcare will no longer be a financial burden for working families. And finally, America will catch up with the rest of the world and guarantee 12 weeks of paid family leave. Y'all, our president sees and understands the obstacles that we face in this country. And he's proven every day for the last 100 days that he's committed to working for us, the people. But none of this, none, y'all, would be possible without you, Georgia. Y'all, we came together as a community to send the first black man, Reverend Wafir Warnock, and the first Jewish man, John Ossoff, to the United States Senate, representing Georgia. And y'all, Georgia was pivotal in electing the first woman as the Vice President of the United States of America. We broke norms and glass ceilings in 2020, and I have no doubt that with your help, we'll do it again in 2022 and 2024. But y'all, now is not the time to rest on our laurels. There is still so much work that must be done, and we must start now. I'm encouraged because we're building political power across this country. We're seeing more people involved in the de democratic process, Voters here and across the country, y'all, they know what those of us who've been in this fight have always known. Change is possible. Georgians have a history of showing up and making our voices heard, and we've proven to the nation that we demand justice and equality for all. More people participated in Georgia's runoff election than they did in the general election in November. Y'all, that's unheard of, and people didn't think that we could do it, but we did. And we must continue to defend our right to vote, the right to affordable health care, the right to equality, and the right to live out loud and on purpose. Y'all, our collective power is stronger than anything that those who want to silence us can throw our way. Because when Georgians voted for change, change happened. When Georgians voted for affordable health care, change happened. When Georgians voted for real leadership to get us out of this pandemic, change happened. And Georgia, our president, our Democratic Congress, y'all, we're going to keep fighting for you every single day. Because Georgia voters, y'all did that. So while today is about celebrating the incredible progress of the last 100 days, thanks to President Biden and Vice President Harris, y'all, I know that we have a bright future ahead of us. 
and I'm so grateful for the real change we're making for our country and for our children. And most of all, I'm in awe of the millions of Georgia voters who made their voices heard, who called for change and permanently changed the trajectory of this country. Georgians, again, y'all did that. And I know that we won't let anyone turn back the clock on progress. And I can promise y'all that it's not going to happen on my watch. Because y'all, this is only the beginning. Thank you. Thank you again for coming to this Getting Back on Track 100 Days of the Biden-Harris Administration Drive-In Rally. We're so glad everyone is here this afternoon. Please listen for a minute as we share some important safety announcements. Once your vehicle is directed to park, please do not move your vehicle. For each other's safety, please maintain social distance throughout the duration of the event. We ask that you remain in or with your vehicle. The only reason to be away from your vehicle is to use the restroom or pick up food at the local food trucks around the perimeter of the lot. Otherwise, if you cannot touch your vehicle, you are too far from it. Wearing masks is required throughout the duration of the event. Don't forget to put on your flashers and show your enthusiasm by honking. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to CAU student Amaya Crockram. to shoot.
Let's give a loud and warm welcome as she takes the stage, Congresswoman from the great state of Georgia, Carolyn Bordeaux. Sure thing. Do what you want to do. Good afternoon, Gwinnett. Once again, we find ourselves back in the center of the political universe. And today, it is my privilege to welcome back to Georgia and to the seventh congressional district, the president, the first lady, Senator Ossoff and Senator Warnock. Today, we celebrate the 100th day in office of President Biden, and it is only natural that he come back to Georgia and to the 7th District, because this is an important place. In 2016, many of us looked at a political map of this area, and this district, this area, was colored a pretty deep shade of red. But I, and many of you out here, knew something that that map was not written by the hand of God. That map needed to be changed, and that map could be changed because we are the map makers. We set out to change the map because we believe in a country that is diverse and inclusive. We believe in a country where we recognize the cultural and economic strength brought by our immigrant communities and the moral authority of the black community and its calls for justice. We believe in a country where we care about one another and we recognize the need to invest in health care, in a world-class education, and in infrastructure so that our children have opportunity and we unlock the door to the American dream. We believe in a country where democracy is grounded in freedom and justice and where we came together as a community from diverse backgrounds and many walks of life to stand side by side with our black friends and neighbors and to attest and to affirm that yes, black lives matter. We believe in a country where our government is run by people who are competent and who are ethical grounded in science and reason so that we can tackle the pandemic and get our children back in school and our economy back on its feet. We set out to change the map, and we did. Not only was I the only competitive Democratic pickup in the country and a critical race for holding the Democrats' House majority, but those of us in the 7th, we weren't done on November 3rd. We turned around and we threw ourselves into those Senate runoffs. And we saw some of the largest growth and vote share in the state, in this district. Mr. President, Georgia delivered to the nation a governing majority to get things done on behalf of the American people. And the 7th Congressional District delivered Georgia. We're not here, though, to celebrate political victories. We're here to celebrate the victories we've had in getting things done for the American people. Thanks to Georgia, thanks to the 7th District, we were able to pass the American Rescue Plan, get shots in arms, money in pockets, help families and small businesses make it through this crisis. In the first 100 days, we delivered more than 200 million vaccines to Americans across the country, including more than 6 million right here in Georgia. Between schools and state and local funding, Forsyth County is receiving more than $50 million in relief. Gwinnett County is receiving almost $450 million. But more than that, the President recently signed into law at the end of March a bill that had its origin right here in the 7th District. In January, Tony Rodriguez and Carol Ann Pence, owners of the Aurora Theater in Lawrenceville, came to me and said they were concerned about PPP loans that, that were set to expire at the end of March. So I worked on a bipartisan and bicameral basis, and we passed legislation, one of the few pieces of legislation, to pass Congress and go to the President's desk. And the President signed this legislation into law at the end of March. And because of this, small businesses are able to get critically needed funds until the end of May. 
but we have so much more to do. The House has passed H.R. 1, the For the People Act, to protect voting rights and to assure nonpartisan redistricting. But we need this bill, and we need John Lewis's Voting Rights Advancement Act to make it all the way through Congress and to the desk of the President. Because the work we do here in Georgia to engage voters to change that political map is not just about addressing deep public needs and good public policy, but we all know that the work we do in Georgia is about the democracy itself. And most fundamentally, it is about our right to vote. And all of us, all of those speaking today, all of you out there, is a veteran of long battles over voting rights, many of us veterans over long voting lines. We have had to fight for our right to vote at every turn. The House has also passed the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act to reform policing and address injustice. And Mr. President, we need this bill to make it all the way through Congress and to your desk. The House has passed the Dreamers Act and the No Ban Act to forbid a ban like a Muslim ban, to protect our diverse immigrant communities. And we need these bills to pass and make it to your desk. The House has passed common sense gun safety bills. Many of our families grieved over the shooting of members of our Asian American community. And we need these bills to pass, make it through Congress and to your desk. We need to tackle and to ensure investment in infrastructure so we can build the green economy of the 21st century. We need to make sure that everyone has quality, affordable health care. And we need to make sure that our children have a world-class education, which we know is so critical to unlocking the door to opportunity and to the American dream. Like so many of you, last night I watched the joint address of the President. And I deeply appreciated the President's message of hope and unity and the call to deliver for the American people, to get things done. During these past 100 days, the President and the Vice President, they've been honest with the American people. They brought them together, and we together have gotten a lot done. But to paraphrase a great American poet, Robert Frost, we still have many promises to keep and miles to go before we sleep. Thank you again, Mr. President, for coming to Georgia's 7th District and coming to Georgia. We are here to deliver on the promises you made and the promise of a greater America. Thank you. Let's give a warm welcome to leader Stacy Abrams. So let's hear it. 100 days. 100 days. 100 days after we got Georgia in line and in the blue. 100 days after we sent Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff to the U.S. Senate. 100 days after Georgia came through for America again. That is worthy of celebration. But we're also here to talk about what we are recovering from. Why we have to get back on track because this nation has suffered from four years of hypocrisy and amnesia. Four years of lying about who we are and forgetting what we're about. Four years of misinformation, misdirection, and miscommunication. 
but America is back on track because of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. 100 days of greatness. You see, my, my, friends in the, my friends in Congress have talked about what's been accomplished. They spoke about the importance of getting shots in the arms of millions, hundreds of millions of Americans. They've talked about the fact that we have delivered economic recovery, so long promised but finally delivered. We've lifted children out of poverty, we've lifted people out of sickness, and we've lifted depression into hope. That is what we've done in 100 days led by Joe Biden. We remember, you see, we, we didn't have the hypocrisy of saying that we wanted to believe in family values but not care about families. That's why Joe Biden did the American Rescue Plan and that's why he's fighting for the American Families Plan. Because you see, he understands that you can't say you love families if you don't care about their children. You can't say you stand for families if they can't go home and take care of one another when they're sick. You can't say you believe in families if you don't believe in getting them vaccinated and getting them health care and getting them all the way through education. But he didn't stop with the American Rescue Plan or the American Families Plan because he understands that our economy is back. And that's why he has the American Jobs Plan. You see, we have a country where some hypocrisy has been running rampant, where we said we want to create jobs, we just don't want to help anyone create those jobs. We want to create jobs, but we want to pay anybody for doing that work. We want to create jobs, but we don't want it to cost anything, do anything, or be anybody's responsibility. Well, Joe Biden said no to that. He said that he's going to put his presidency where his promises were. And that is that he's going to stand up for infrastructure, for rebuilding this nation. But we're going to go further. We're going to build for the future. That is why we're celebrating the first 100 days. Because we've got a president who doesn't suffer from hypocrisy, but he also doesn't suffer from amnesia. You see, when he said that he was going to stand with our families, he did it. When he said he was going to fight for voting rights, he's doing it. He didn't stand silently by when people were harmed. He put a justice department together that is taking people to court and taking justice back into our hands. We've got a president who understands that talking about being green isn't just a, a it's not just words that we use, it's a belief that we have to hold. Because you see, climate action is happening whether we want it to or not. I mean, look, guys, it's, it's not even May in Georgia and it's already hot. But the heat that's here in Georgia, the heat that's rising across this country, is the heat that's on fire for change and for real action, for rejoining the Paris Accords, for putting money into clean energy, but for investing in those communities that have been left out for so long. That's what Joe Biden is all about. We've got 100 days behind us, but we've got a long way to go. And you see, the way we get there is the work that we've been doing, the work we've been anchoring here in Georgia in the fight for voting rights. You see, last night, Joe Biden called out for action, for bipartisan action, because in the amnesia category is the fact that for so many years, voting rights was a bipartisan endeavor. Through 2006, it was Democrats and Republicans who fought to renew the Voting Rights Act. It suddenly, though, after 2013, Republicans have forgotten that they were part of the architecture of getting good done. Well, we're inviting them back to the table. But we know that voting rights has to be done because that's where all of our other rights are grounded. And we need the For the People Act because the people need relief. Bills like SB 202 here in Georgia and the terrible versions of it around the country are looking to steal our voices and take our choices. And we will not stand for that in this democracy. And Joe Biden and Kamala Harris understand that voting rights is not about partisanship, despite what some people would have you believe with their clever slogans and their fun taglines. When you tell somebody that too many people showed up so you're going to shut down the opportunities, that too many people mailed in their voices and so you're going to slow down their opportunities, you see, voting rights is not about partisanship, it's about citizenship. 
And we are Americans standing together. Because when you hear Joe Biden speak, when you've heard him talk about voting rights, you've never heard him say he wants voting rights for Democrats or voting rights for Republicans. When he talks about the American Rescue Plan, he didn't say he was going to rescue blue states, not red states. He said he was going to rescue the United States of America. When he said he wanted an American Families Plan, these weren't Democratic families or Republican families. These were American families. And when he said he's building American jobs in the American Jobs Plan, these aren't Democratic jobs or Republican jobs. These are American jobs. And these are anchored by American voting rights. And that's why we need the For the People Act to pass. That's why we need the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act to pass. Because in a democracy, in our democracy, in our nation, our pledge to one another is not that we always agree, but that we always have the right to speak. Our promise is not that we win every election. God knows that's not the promise. But the promise is we get to be heard in that election. That is how we get the rights we need. That's how we get the policies we need. That's how we get the future we deserve. And there is one man fighting every day to make that so. And that is why I am so excited to be right here today as we get back on track and focus on the next 100 days with Joe Biden as our president, with Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff as our senators, with our extraordinary congressional delegation, and with the people of Georgia leading the way because we're back on track and the future belongs to all of us. Thank you all so much. Take care. Bottom.
I know we've got a lot of special guests here, including all of you. We got Hank Johnson, Congressman Sanford Bishop, Nakima Williams, Carolyn Bordeaux, Calvin Smart, Billy Mitchell, Patsy Austin Gatson, Jamie Harrison, Lucy Macbeth, and Sam Park. Let's give them a round of applause. I am Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. In America, there are 50 states, over 19,000 cities, 3,006 counties, 14 boroughs, 64 parishes, 11 census areas in Alaska, and of course, the District of Columbia. Our President and First Lady could have celebrated their first 100 days in office in any of these places, but they decided to spend it with us in Gwinnett County, Georgia today. We should all be proud of that. Now, for those of you of a certain age, you may remember a great love song written by Quincy Jones named 100 Ways. Does anybody remember that song? James Ingram sings this song, and he's telling this guy how to show the lady that he loves just how much he appreciates and cares for her. Now, I sing it for you, but I don't want to scar y'all for life. He sings, love her today, find 100 ways. Now you may find it odd that I would mention a love song today, but after the past four years, I don't know about you, but I needed my president to show me just how much he loved me and all of America. And in just 100 days, President Biden and Vice President Harris have found 100 ways and more to show us how much they care. Our democracy has been battered and bruised over the last few years, but we are still standing, Georgia. And across America, I am so proud that people like you continue to step up and support candidates and policies that ensure that we are all valued, no matter our race, our creed, sexual orientation, or income bracket. In just the first 100 days, the Biden administration has over-delivered on life-saving policy in action. With over 200 million shots in arms, more than half of U.S. adults have gotten one shot and two-thirds of all seniors are fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Honk your horns if you've been vaccinated. But even with this success, too many of our loved ones are still dying. People like my friend Lauren, whose funeral I attended just last week. So if you've not yet been vaccinated, please think of families like Lauren's family and her only son, Andrew, who will graduate from high school in just a couple of weeks and won't have his mom by his side to celebrate with him. While it's too late for Lauren, the COVID-19 vaccination really is a shot of hope for so many across the globe. And that's why I am so thankful that we have a president and vice president who keeps our families top of mind and will not rest until this pandemic is behind us. You can hug for that. In the last 100 days, President Biden has not just found 100 ways to show us that he loves us, Georgia, but a 160 million ways. That's the number of individual relief checks that have been sent out across the country as a result of the American Rescue Plan. These checks have been the lifeline for business owners like Longtran, who you will hear from shortly. 
Democrats are also expanding small business loan programs to support those hardest hit by the pandemic. In 100 days, relief has been provided to 4 million struggling small businesses to help keep their doors open. But we still have so much work to do. This year alone, Republican state lawmakers across the country have proposed over 360 laws to restrict voting access, and it's not just here in Georgia. We are seeing similar bills in Arizona, Florida, and Texas. But our hero, Congressman John Lewis, taught us well. And while he is no longer here with us physically on Earth, we are reminded that the vote is the most powerful nonviolent tool that we have. And we will use every single tool in our toolbox to continue fighting voter suppression laws across the country. That is why we must pass the For the People Act and the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. And while we continue to protest and litigate, we must show up and vote, and that's right, get in some good trouble. Now back to the love song that I told you about, Find 100 Ways. It goes on to say, somebody says, sing it to you. I'm not going to do that. Maybe she has it in her mind that she's just wasting her time. Ask her to stay, find 100 ways. Well, when we showed up to vote in November, was it a waste of our time, Georgia? When we showed up to vote in January, sending not just one, but two new senators to Washington, was it a waste of our time? I didn't think so either. Over the last 100 days, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have reminded us why elections matter. And it will never be a waste of our time when we all join together to vote and make a difference in this country. Thank you, President and Dr. Biden, for in just 100 days, for finding more than 100 ways to show all of America just how much you care. We love you, and may God bless and keep each of you. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Georgia Democratic Party volunteer, Long Tran. Do you remember? My name is Long Tran, and it is an honor to be here today. As the son of two South Vietnamese immigrants from South Vietnam, on today standing here, the eve of the 46th anniversary of the fall of Saigon, this is an extraordinary moment for me. On April 30th, 1975, my father, a South Vietnamese army pilot and so many other Soldiers, American and South Vietnamese, scrambled as they evacuated a city that started to burn, a nation that started to fall. On the horizon was a glimmer of hope. Some call it the shining city on the hill. We all know it to be America. And America became their home. This is my story, my family's story, one of millions that make up the Asian American experience here in our nation. We are living the American dream. May is right around the corner, and with it, so is Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month and Awareness. The awareness part is important. As an Asian American small business owner here in Gwinnett, in Georgia, in America, this pandemic has hit our community hard. I have a coffee shop in Peachtree Corners. We opened up in January of 2020, right before the pandemic. And it has been tough on us, but we've made it through. But we didn't do it alone with our own hard work. We made it through because of our neighbors, our neighbors and our community. It's pulling together to get us through the hard times is what makes our country great. Now, this past year wasn't just economic challenges. We saw harassment and violence rear its ugly head. That's why in this past election, the stakes were high, not just for small business owners like mine struggling to stay afloat, but it was high for our Asian American community as we faced rising hate. The stakes were also high for Georgians of every background, Black, white, Latinx, LGBTQ, Jewish, and Muslim. The stakes were high for all of us, not just across Georgia, but for America, for every community. So what did we do? We got out there and we talked to our neighbors. We talked to our communities. And we reached across our state and across the country. We became a broad coalition fighting for new leadership to bring us out of this crisis and into a brighter future, to once again make our nation that beacon of hope that my father and so many others turned to for refuge. We busted our butts. We knocked on doors, called voters, placed yard signs in front of businesses and our homes. We wrote postcards. And Georgia, you heard our call. You answered by getting out the vote like never before. The turnout in the AAPI, Latinx, and black communities were record shattering. You showed the importance of voting and why voting matters. Yes, protect the vote. We elected Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the first black and Asian American vice president, and for the first time, in our state's history, and for the first time in 28 years, our state has elected a Democratic ticket. And right here in Gwinnett, we flipped the 7th District. We elected Carolyn Bordeaux, and we sent her to the State House. But we didn't stop there. We continued to fight. We continued to talk to our neighbors. We fought. And we, made, we elected Georgia's first black senator, Reverend Raphael Warnock. We elected our first Jewish senator, John Ossoff. We did that, Georgia. We made the difference. And now, 100 days later, 
we see the fruits of our vote. Joe Biden listened to us. He and his administration is putting our country back on track. The American Rescue Plan has already changed the course of the pandemic in Georgia. It's bringing financial help to families that desperately need it. It's giving businesses like mine a shot at success and fulfilling the American dream. More and more people are getting vaccinated every day, and we see our communities once again start to thrive. But on top of all of that, the first 100 days of the Biden administration have shown that we have true moral leadership in the White House again. It was a little over a month ago when six Asian American women were murdered in attacks on Asian-owned businesses here in Atlanta. Our community was devastated. We were angry. We were scared. But through strong moral leadership, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris stopped what they were doing, and they came down to Atlanta and met with the leaders of our community. They shared in our grief. They listened to our concerns. They committed to fighting the rising hatred against our community and all communities across the country. That is real leadership. Life is full of challenges, and sometimes the odds are stacked against you. The odds were stacked against my parents before they came to America. The odds were stacked against my business when the pandemic hit. But we made it through, and with this administration, things are looking up again. The odds were against us here in Georgia during the election, but with hard work and perseverance, we did what many thought we couldn't. And it's only been 100 days, but Joe Biden's presidency has already begun to lift us up. It has made our communities safer, healthier, and stronger. It has restored faith in our country, faith in the United States of America that we will once again be the shining example for all the world to see. I cannot wait to see what the next 100 days will bring us. I have faith that we have great things in store for our nation. So thank you, President Biden. Thank you, Georgia. I love you. And now it is my great honor to welcome back to the state of Georgia, President Joe Biden and the First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden. You know your love, keep on lifting higher, higher and higher. I said your love, keep on lifting higher and higher. Now once I was downhearted, disappointment was my closest friend. But then you came and he soon departed, and you know he never showed his face again. That's why you. Thank you, Long. Joe and I had the chance to see our friends. We just saw them, President and former First Lady Carter. <clears throat> and they are such a powerful reminder that serving our country isn't limited to the office you hold. The Carters continue their work, making our country stronger every day. And we are grateful and honored for their friendship. And wow, I'm so glad to be with all of you. Thank you for being here. From Columbus to Albany, Macon to Atlanta, I've always felt so at home here. And I'm especially excited to be back in the state that sent Raphael Warnock and John Ossoff to the Senate. And you know, 
of Georgia, we could not have passed the American Rescue Plan without you. In some ways, it's hard to believe that it's already been 100 days. Back in D.C., we're still getting to know our new home, figuring out where the light switches are and remembering to use coasters on the historic furniture. But in other ways, we've packed so much into the time that's just flown by. I've already traveled to schools and community colleges across the country, visited vaccine sites and military bases, and charted the course for our Joining Forces initiative. So thank you to all the military who are here. And that's just my office. Across the administration, we've made historic progress all because of the historic leadership of my husband. <laughs> you hear them honking their horns for you, Joe? <laughs> and what drew me to Joe all those years ago was his fortitude. Beneath his kindness, his charm and good humor, was a man of action who always kept his promises did the necessary work, and showed up when it mattered. And, and that's why I have always believed that he would be the president that we need. In the first 100 days of this administration, America is seeing the true character of the person that I have known for so long whose heart is big enough to comfort the families of more than 500,000 lost, whose vision is ambitious enough to make the investment of a generation, whose determination is strong enough to bring Americans from all walks of life together, whose commitment is steadfast enough to not only keep his promises, but surpass them. <laughs> Joe is a man for this moment. And with his leadership, we are rising. I couldn't be more proud of what he's done in just 100 days or more hopeful of what we are going to do next. Please help me in welcoming my husband, the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Georgia and the other county back there. I love you. A lot of folks out here tonight. Well, I'm ready to go home because she never says that to me at home. I was, this is worth the trip hearing that. I am Jill's husband, as obvious to everybody. I never get introduced as she's my wife. I'm her husband. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm proud to be. You know, uh, I want to thank Long time, Tran, uh, for being with us tonight. His story is a story of, uh, of an entire generation, but it's a story that goes back many generations, not just in South Vietnam and in Asia writ large, but all over the world. And in America, it's the reason why we're strong. We are the most diverse democracy in the world. And we do, there's not a single thing, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, there's not a single thing we can't do when we do it together. So thank you all. And I want to thank my friend Keisha Lance Bottoms. And thanks to Democratic members of Congress, Senator Ossoff and Warnock, Representative Sanford Bishop and old friend Hank Johnson, and Lucy McBath, and look, I want to make sure Representative Williams is here. I thought I saw her. 
a moment ago. There you are, okay. And, and Representative Carolyn Bordeaux. You know, we need to work and help them keep their seats. It's important. We run the first round, but there's more coming up. And my good friend and DNC Chair Jamie Harrison from South Carolina, and Stacey Abrams, who can be anything she wants to be from whatever she chooses to president. I want to thank you, Stacey, for empowering the people to vote and to make their voices heard. You've been amazing. And most of all, I want to thank you, the people of Georgia. We'll give you a microphone. Uh-oh. Folks, Georgia was uh, 100 days ago today when I was inaugurated on the steps of the United States Capitol to be your president. And I was looking forward to coming back and seeing these guys. I agree with you. I'm working on it, man. Give me another five days. <laughs> Folks, you all know what they're talking about. There should be no private prisons, period. None, period. That's what they're talking about, private detention centers. They should not exist. And we are working to close all of them. So, folks, look. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Okay. Let him go. No, no. I promise you. The only thing that's going to keep me from doing that is you keep moving. I promise you. Thank you. <laughs> folks. Look, it's been 100 days since I first sat at my desk in the Oval Office and went to work for you and the American people. I want to thank you. I want to thank the American people, because I think we've gotten a lot done. I promised, even before I was sworn in, that I would get, in my first 100 days, 100 million COVID vaccine shots in people's arms. We've lost over 550,000 Americans. Well, we delivered over 220 million COVID shots in the first 100 days. We vastly expanded access. We've got 100 million doses of vaccine, enough for every single American. And we've done it by getting vaccines to some 40,000 pharmacies across the country, 700 community centers. And now, now everyone, over the age of 16 is now eligible to get vaccinated right away. So please do it. Get vaccinated now. Now, now, now. <clears throat> and we promise to deliver emergency relief to the millions of Americans who are in financial distress, and I might add, through no fault of their own. So we got out $1,400 checks to the American people, and we kept that promise. 85 percent of the households in America have gotten those checks. We've already sent out more than 160 million checks out the door. And I want to stop here and give thanks to both your senators, Senators Ossoff and Warnock, for making it happen, because those two votes, had we not come back and you elected them, those two votes made the difference. It passed by a single vote. <coughs> And that means we owe special thanks to the people of Georgia. Because of you, the rest of the world, because of your two senators, the rest of America was able to get the help they got so far. The American Rescue Plan would not have passed. So much have we gotten done, like getting checks to people probably would not have happened. So if you ever wonder if elections make a difference, just remember, what you did here in Georgia when you elected Ossoff and Warnock, you began to change the environment. Now look, because of you, we passed one of the most consequential rescue bills in American history. 
So what did do, you know, what did you do? Well, what did you do with your vote here in Georgia? Well, you changed America. You began to change America. And you're helping us prove that democracy, democracy can still deliver for the people. Look, I want to thank you for all of that. All of America wants to thank you, because here's what we mean by delivering for the people. We created, in the first 100 days, 1,300,000 new jobs. 1,300,000 jobs in 100 days. That's more Jew new jobs in the first 100 days of any president in history. Folks, because of you. And we're here. Just a few more things that we need. We provided food and nutrition assistance for children and families so they don't go hungry. Rental assistance to keep people from being evicted from their homes. Loans to small businesses like Long to keep people — to keep them open and people employed. And we made Georgia eligible to expand Medicaid, which means another 500,000 Georgians can be covered. <laughs> Excuse me. Folks, health care should be a right, not a privilege in America. And here's the thing <clears throat> I'm most proud of. We are on track to cut child poverty in half this year by having passed the child tax credit. In half. But as much as we've done, we've got a lot more to do. That's why I propose the American Jobs Plan. It is a, it's a once-in-a-generation investment in America. It's the biggest jobs plan in this country since World War II. And here's what it does. It creates jobs rebuilding and modernizing our roads, our highways, our bridges, our ports, our airports. It will provide clean drinking water for every American. There are 10 million homes in America. And there are 40, 400,000 schools and daycare centers that have lead pipes where drinking the water is a danger. We're going to replace 100 percent of those nation's lead pipes and service lines so every child can have a turn at the faucet and know what they're drinking is clean water. Folks, we're going to provide reliable high-speed Internet everywhere in America, including rural America. Fifteen percent of Georgia households do not have Internet at all. We're going to change that. And those infrastructure projects are going to create millions of good-paying jobs just installing them. We also know that two million women — two million women have dropped out of the workforce during this pandemic. Two million because too often they have to choose between whether or not they can get care for their child and their family or go to work. In the 21st century, Infrastructure isn't just steel and concrete. It's people. And it's time we start paying people who come to our homes and care for people that love them and are going to take care of them. And, folks, you know, when a lot of people talk about climate, they forget to mention the most important word. I made a promise when I was down here running that I would, in fact, immediately rejoin the Paris Climate Accord on day one, which we did. And I would have, in the first 100 days, a climate summit here in America, inviting all the world's polluters and all the world's emitters, <coughs> including the biggest nations in the world. And they came, everyone from Russia to China to the European Union to India, all of them. And you know what? What came across? Every single one of those countries, whether they're going to meet their obligations or not, is finally understanding that taking care of saving the planet is going to create millions of good-paying jobs. Millions of good-paying jobs. We're going to put engineers and construction workers, electricians, electrical workers, building efficient buildings and homes. We're going to install 500,000 charging stations along the highways we're going to rebuild. And there's no reason why the blades for windmill turbines can't be built in Pittsburgh instead of Beijing. There's no reason. There's no reason that wor American workers can't lead the world in the production of electric vehicles and the batteries that propel them. We can do what we need to do in saving the planet and yet create millions of good-paying jobs. Folks, and with all the investments in the American Jobs Plan, here's what we're going to do. We're going to buy American. Let me explain what that means. 
You know, <clears throat> it's not a violation of any trade agreement. Every tax dollar that we, in fact, get for construction of anything is going to go to be used to buy American products made in America that create American jobs. That's the way it should be. Because, look, folks, Wall Street didn't build this country. You did. The middle class did. And unions built the middle class. And here's one final thing I want to mention about the American Jobs Plan. We got 500 — we got $5 billion investment in that plan for community violence intervention. There's a lot of work we have to do, and a lot of work we have to do. And I want you to know who's responsible for that. Mayor Keisha Bottoms, Keisha Lance Bottoms. But, folks, we not only have to invest in America, we need to invest in our families. We need to invest in things our families care about and need the most. That's why the American Family Plan does four things, and we pay for it all. One, without raising the deficit. It adds four years more guaranteed public education in America. If we were building on our education system from start today, like we did in the last century, <clears throat> did anybody think we'd say 12 years of education is enough to compete and win the competition of the 21st century? I don't think so. <clears throat> so when we did that last century, it made America the best educated, best prepared nation in the world. But the rest of the world is caught up to us now. So my plan provides a universal preschool for every three- and four-year-old in America. Everyone. That's a game-changer. It's a game-changer. And it also provides two years of free community college. That's a game-changer as well. Jill is a community college professor, still teaching. She constantly says, Joe, community colleges can change the lives of students. As she always say, look, any country that out-educates us is going to outcompete us. <clears throat> She'll be leading one of these efforts as well. Look, one more thing. We've got some great historical black universities and colleges in Georgia. And we're going to be investing them and incre investing in them and increasing Pell Grants. They don't have they don't have the back the, all the the money that is comes from the large universities. But their students are as competent to do anything in the future as anyone else. But here's the deal. We're going to provide up to $47 billion over 10 years to increase their capacity to do everything but deal with, you know, cybersecurity, all those things where the jobs of the future are. <clears throat> Second thing we're going to do, provide quality, affordable child care. You know, I know, I was a single dad for five years. When my wife and daughter got killed right after I got elected to the United States Senate as a 29-year-old kid, uh, what happened was uh, I was lucky. I had a daughter. I had uh, two boys survive. My daughter and wife were killed, but my two boys survived. And fortunate for me, I had an incredible family. My sister, my brother, and my mother and father, they basically moved in and helped me raise my kids. Because although I was a senator, I was listed as the poorest senator in history, but not history, but in the years I was there, I couldn't afford the cost of daycare. I couldn't afford the cost of child care. But I had them. I don't know how I would have done it without them. <clears throat> so understand how important child care can be. Under my plan, most folks won't pay more than 7 percent of their income for child care as a max. And the folks who need it the most and can't afford it all won't have to spend a dime. That's important. And the third thing is the American Family Plan will finally provide up to 12 weeks of paid family and medical leave. No one. No one should have to choose between a job and a paycheck or taking care of themselves, a loved one, a parent, or a spouse, or a child. And fourth, the American Family Plan puts money directly into the pockets of millions of families. The American Rescue Plan, we passed, we passed the child credit. We're going to expand that child credit to families for another five years. Families with two kids, that will mean that as much as $7,200 will go into their pockets every year. Georgia. This is a tax cut for more than 2 million families in Georgia. We're cutting taxes for people by a tax credit. And we're going to lift more than 170,000 children out of poverty right here in America and cut child poverty in this year in half. Folks, so how are we going to pay for all this? 
Well, with tax cuts for the middle class and working class families, how are we going to pay for that? Well, it's real simple. It's about time the very wealthy and corporations start paying their fair share. It's about time. <clears throat> as simple as that. And folks, I'm not going to bore you the details, but I promise you, no one making under $400,000 a year is going to pay a single additional penny in tax. No one. As I said last night, the middle class and working people of this country are already paying enough in taxes. It's time for the richest 1 percent of Americans and corporate America to start to do their part. Let me just give you a simple fact. Last year, for example, 55 of our largest corporations in America paid zero dollars in federal tax. Zero. And they made $40 billion. Not a penny in tax. Folks, if, in fact, we had a minimum book tax for corporations, for the Fortune — just the Fortune 500 companies, just a minimum tax of 15 percent — about all you'd sign up for 15 percent tax right now. If, in fact, it was just 15 percent, we'd raise $230 billion. Pay for all this. So, folks, I'm not trying to punish anyone. Well, we've got to make corporations making $40 billion paying zero is just not right. Something's seriously wrong here. Georgia, I think a lot of you know I ran for president saying we had to heal the soul of this nation. And that's what we have to do. And the conviction of George Floyd's murderer is now our opportunity to make some real progress to restore the soul of this country. And we can do it. We can act rational police reform. We can root out systemic racism in our criminal justice system. And with real plans I outlined today, we have a real chance to deliver real equity across the board to everyone — black, white, Latino, Asian American. Good jobs, good schools, affordable housing, clean air, clean water. Look, being able to generate wealth and pass it down through generations is how most folks got there. But it means — how did most of the middle-class folks you know who are Caucasian or white, how did they make it? Well, they were able to get enough money to buy a home, and they build equity in that home. And when they build equity in that home, they passed it on. And they passed it on, and that's how you build wealth. Well, we're going to make sure that African Americans, as well as make sure that Latinos and Asian Americans are able to build that kind of wealth. Look. When the Vice President and I were in Atlanta last month, we met with leaders of the, Afri of the Asian American community in Georgia following the mass shootings here in Atlanta. It was a raw and powerful meeting and a very emotional moment. And some criticized me for speaking out nationally about that hate crime. Some criticized me for saying how ugly and sinister it was. Well, since then, because of the two senators you sent, among others, the United States Senate passed the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act to protect Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders from the vicious hate crimes we've seen too often and too long. And it passed 94 to 1. So don't tell me we can't make progress. It's a first step, but we have a lot more to do. You know, that's right. If we are to truly heal here the soul of America, we need to project that sacred right and protect it to vote. You know, in this state of Dr. King and John Lewis, you know how precious and how precarious the right to vote is. In November and then again in January, your vote changed the world, not just North, the world. But instead of celebrating that, it's being attacked. More people voted for president in 2020 than any time in American history, ever. <laughs> and they did it in the middle of a pandemic. And what — you've seen what's happened here in Georgia with your state's laws. It's just wrong, wrong. And it's why we have to pass the voting rights protection laws coming through the Congress. Right now, H.R. 1 and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act both should be passed now. So, folks, it's only been 100 days, but I have to tell you, I've never been more optimistic about the future in America. America's on the move again. 
We're choosing hope over fear, truth over lies, light over darkness. And we're working. We're working again. We're dreaming again. We're discovering again. And we're leading the world again. And you're proving democracy can deliver for the people. We just need to remember who we are. We are the United States of America. And there's nothing, nothing, nothing we cannot do if we do it together. So let's stay together. God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Georgia. You know your love. Keep on lifting higher, higher and higher. I said your love. Keep on I see two guys in the back. I want to come up here. Looking for my mask, I'm in trouble. I'm so glad I finally found you. That's that one in a million girl. And now with my loving arms around you, honey, I can stand up and face the world. Yeah.